Thank you. Uh, so, in the lead up to this conversation, I've gotten to know Mrs. Ghani, and you shared with me a picture of Afghanistan that's very different from the one that I'm used to mm -hmm. seeing. Um, but I want to cut to the chase because we don't have a lot of time Unfortunately. Uh, to talk about all the things that we could. Mm -hmm. um, so with all the people we have in this room, Fortune 500 companies, international NGOs, donor agencies, media, uh, what should we be doing differently based on what you have seen in Afghanistan? Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm glad to be with everyone. Um, I have a lot to say. I try to say it in very little. And maybe I'll use a story. Um, about 10 days ago, uh, I was still in Kabul, and uh, the head of a uh, European international aid agency, who had just been appointed to Kabul um, as a res rep, came to see me. Usually they come for courtesy visit and to kind of uh, exchange ideas. And uh, he said, well, uh, Mrs. Ghani, I, I'm going to need your advice and your protection. I said, okay, what's, what's the story? He says, well, uh, it seems like uh, now when we go to the field, uh, we get a lot of pushback. What's happening? And I said, uh, are you going in places where there is a program citizen charter? He looked at me, I said, you, you don't know what is Citizen Charter. Okay, do you know what the NSP was? And he said yes, because he, he had been in Afghanistan in 2013, and NSP is the National Solidarity Program that was at the level of villages. He said, yes, yes, I know NSP. I said, the Citizen Charter is a sequel of NSP, and it's more, but it's much more developed, and it covers ma uh, many more uh, aspects. These are two programs that are at the level of the village. And uh, the Citizens' Charter, it, both programs are uh, developed by the government, uh, initially with the help of international agencies, but it is a government program. And the Citizen Charter goes into a village and gets all the villagers involved. They make a map of their village, they see where they need roads, where they need uh, a well, where they need uh, a school, uh, they decide what are their needs, and then they sit down and decide what are their priorities. And it is a program that is 50-50, so that there is always to, has to be the same number of women and men. Mm. So I said, you know, if ever you happen to be going into an area where there is a citizen charter, and you're coming and you're saying, well, I've decided I'm going to put a school here, they're going to tell you, no, we, we, we don't want a school here. <laughs> we wanted something else. So you get the pushback. Uh, he also um, wanted to deal with refugees and with C uh, of people that are affected with war, you know, IDPs. And he said, we can't really cross the line to go. People are not allowing us to go. And, you know, we used to be. I said, well, do you work with the... Uh, Red Crescent, the Afghan Red Crescent. And he said, yes, we have dealings with them. I said, no, because this organization has maintained neutrality and can cross the road, uh, the line between uh, different factions. And they have a modus operandi and they have the whole setup. Maybe you could talk with them and maybe you can work through them. And he said, no, 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 we want to be considered as neutral ourselves. And I said, wait a minute, you are a Westerner. And Westerners have bombed these people. How can you be neutral? This is what I want to say about what the international organizations need to be more aware of. They need to be aware of the changes that are happening on the ground, that a government is establishing itself and is starting to have programs, and that people are buying into these programs. And they also need to understand how they are being perceived, and work with that. I mean, I'm very grateful for all the generosity in wanting to help, but from now on, you need to make sure that whatever you're doing, you have asked the Afghans what they want. Do they have an opinion? Do they have something, uh, some other idea they'd rather do? Talk to them so that you can really help not as 
a donor and a beneficiary, but as equal partners. Yeah. Well, I think this is, you know, what you present is that there has been a change in Afghanistan and a local civil society is ready to lead. But when donors come in, they're not ready to follow, despite all of our rhetoric about how local civil societies must own the process of change. And this is fundamentally a role reversal, you know, where an, an official is not able to understand when he has to follow this process. Um, so as we, as we talk about new tools, I feel like we can't, uh, actually do that unless we start to see the people that we're working with differently. Um, I mean, do you think that this okay. is actually at the heart of the problem? Uh, that is. the way we see the Afghan people and ourselves relative to them? It is really the heart of the problem. Uh, sometimes, uh, so some of the uh, expats that work in, uh, uh, in Afghanistan are really delightful people and have made the effort to get to understand who they are working with and what these people need. But a lot of them come for, you know, six months, one year, two years, three years at the most. And it's punctuated, they have R&R, they have uh, uh, travels back to the headquarters for consultation, they have to go to conferences. So they're in and out all the time. And they kind of think they know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, and I think a lot of uh, um, a lot of organizations have come to this conclusion, at least on paper. Uh, there was a um, a study by uh, OCDE recently on uh, women and youth actors of change, and they said that the most important uh, phase of a project or a program is the needs assessment phase. That means to sit down with the people you want to help, to listen to them, find out what they're talking about, what are their concerns, what are their needs, and to try and meet those needs. And this takes time. Uh, I know that in this, uh, uh, in this program you're hearing a lot about data, about uh, you know, technology and all this. I'm very low-key. Uh, I don't even have a Twitter account. <laughs> but, uh, 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 but the human, the human factor is extremely important. Let's not forget it. Because once you have human beings who understand what needs to be done, then they will take the, the burden, they'll take the responsibility, and they can, uh, they are there, they don't hop in and out all the time, they are there, they can be in charge, they can own the project, and they can bring it to completion. Because let's face it, a project takes three, four, five years to be completed. And sometimes when you have changes of uh, uh, leadership uh, from the international aid agencies, um, things get lost and so don't if really... So we, if we apply this uh, to the issue of women's rights in Afghanistan, mm. um, you know, we see Afghanistan as one of the most oppressive countries in the world towards women, and we have framed so many uh, solutions which we deliver in the form of programs yeah. uh, based on that way uh, mm -hmm. that we see this. So we have programs to protect women's rights and to counter violence against women. You know, in these 17 years of executing it, uh, what has worked and what should we be doing differently to be more effective? Uh, let me just very quickly talk about uh, the role of international aid agencies and the media. Uh, I once Early on, maybe like three or four years ago, I once told a UNHCR res rep in Kabul that, you know, regarding IDPs, I don't think I will want to do humanitarian aid. It does not, it's not a solution. The numbers keep increasing and, uh, uh, you know, it's like a band-aid. And his reaction, oh, Mrs. Ghani, I hope you're not going to go public with this. We're just starting our fundraising campaign. What does that mean? That means that we have to show that there is a big need and those poor women, they are isolated, they're in the corner, they're not, uh, uh, nobody's looking at them, nothing is happening. Please don't uh, uh, topple the cart or whatever the expression is. Mm. So 
a lot of media is negative. And I think part of it, unfortunately, is due to international aid organization. And please, those of you who do that, please think again. This is not the way to portray a country. Yes, Afghan, Afghan women are not having it easy, but Afghan women are very strong women because they have not had it easy. They're very resourceful. They do a lot with very little. They are really very important members of society. We, I'm talking about a country that is in post-conflict mode. Okay? What does that mean? That means that we've gone through three decades of war. That means our society has been completely uh, destroyed. Uh, people, families, uh, uh, we have people outside or inside uh, the country, but everywhere they're no longer a unit. Uh, it's, a, it's a society that needs to be rebuilt. And, and so because of that, we need to help rebuild. We need to help, you know, like when you have a child, if you tell the child, oh, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're, not, you're ugly, you think, the child is going to be a, a, a problem. Uh, he never grow to be self... Uh, but when you bring positive encouragement and say, no, you can do it, why not try and do that and try and do that, then eventually you really, uh, you really reach uh, a point. I think, yes, the women uh, situation has improved. Their women are much more visible. Mm -hmm. uh, we have many more women uh, in uh, positions of government, of uh, public uh, uh, service, of uh, private companies. Uh, it's not yet where it should be. And, but how do, you, how do you think we can effectively engage those women and that local leaders um, to lead that process? I think what women need the most is real training, real transfer of knowledge. Not those workshops where you go for two weeks and uh, you get uh, an envelope at the end of each day, the $5 for your transportation, and then at the end you get a nice piece of paper that says that so-and-so has attended this. Real training, real skills from the most uh, basic skills of, uh, you know, database, we love data, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, computer skills, of office management, to much more like middle management in the government, how do you conduct a meeting, how do you call, how do you get to, to a conclusion, I mean, things of the sort, and then to uh, more specific skills. Um, Women can learn and very quickly, and women are also very detail-oriented and do very good in accountancy, for example. Uh, they do very good in every, every kind of uh, 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 job that really needs patience and uh, detail, uh, uh, attention to detail. So there are a lot of things that the women can do, but you need to train them. And if you, send, if you put women in positions of uh, decision-making, and they are not trained, you are harming, you are not helping. Because everybody will say, oh, she was a woman. What did you think? She's not going to be able to do that job. Yeah. But so on the contrary, you have to train her so that they say, oh my God, she really was so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it sounds like there is lots of training, mm -hmm. and yet there's a fine line between what works and what doesn't. Often it looks the same, um, but it's fundamentally different. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it sounds like what you're saying is that it's, we have to start with real relationships yes. to start to actually understand the people and the problem. Mm -hmm. And that may completely surprise us uh, in terms of the types of problems we end up tackling compared to the ones we thought we needed to tackle. Um, and maybe from there, a kind of new way of engaging with a different Afghanistan, which is changing, uh, can emerge. One of the reasons I'm wearing uh, the veil today, I mean the scarf, it's because I'm speaking in the name of millions of women. I probably there are 16 million of women in Afghanistan. But also because I wanted you to be accustomed to seeing persons uh, wearing a scarf, and yet she has ideas, yet she can express herself, yet she is, she is a human being. I think that's a great note to end to on. End on. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much, Mrs. Ghani. Thank you. Thank you.